Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Wade Acuff and I am here today with uh, wildlife uh, photographer and videographer, Christy Odom. How's it going, Christy? I'm so good, I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited to talk with everybody about video today. <laughs> awesome, glad to have you. Uh, before you uh, before we get going, if you missed it, uh, the previous stream, you can catch a replay on Behance and on YouTube. Uh, check out the Lightroom Bootcamp with Aaron Nace, uh, uh, it's going to be Monday through Thursday this week uh, from 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Um, tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt every day. Um, Christy, why don't you uh, give us a little bit of uh, a little bit about what you do um, and what we're going to get up to in the next couple of days? Oh, wonderful. Well, I'm really excited to be here. I'm a wildlife photographer and filmmaker. I focus on conservation stories as well as connecting people emotionally to wildlife. I want to show that animals have personality and emotions and characters. And so I've been a visual artist for a while now. I'm part of the Nikon Ambassador team. I'm part of the International League of Conservation Photographers. And yeah, so really excited because the cameras are getting so good and you can do so many amazing things with them. And I remember when I, I, I got my Nikon, my first Nikon Z, my Z7 II, my Z7 was the first one. And I remember seeing all the video functions and going, well, I've got lenses, I've got a camera, like, what does this yeah. do? And I started playing around and I, it opened this world to me, like a total world of like exploration and creativity and being able to like do video has ended up opening a lot of doors professionally for me as well. Um, the camera's always a, been a tool for me to connect deeper to nature. So being able to do slow motion videos, I started being able to see all these intricacies of what slowing down time looked like for the wings of birds. And I, I just became obsessed and I'm excited today to, to talk more about that journey. Excellent. Um, well, what, uh, what, what are we up to? Like, what are we actually getting our hands on today then? We're going to get our hands on Premiere Pro and we're going to um, start today with talking about making short clips for your website, for Instagram, for Facebook, which is how I got started in slow motion video was just kind of the short form. And then tomorrow we're going to go much bigger than that because these little short form videos that I've been making has ended up landing me multiple campaigns for Nikon oh. doing slow motion video. Are we okay? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought I heard an O. Oh. <laughs> no, that was me saying, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, sometimes. But, and so I'm really excited too, because um, I want to be able to like, I mean, Premiere Pro is, is a beast. It is a big oh, yeah. Yeah. program. I feel like I probably know five to 10% of that program, but I think that's what's exciting is the fact that even with the limited tools that I'm able to use, I am doing big commercial jobs and I'm really excited to help push people that maybe have never used the program before, show them these intro tools that I use and I use professionally. And hopefully that'll open up doors for people to not be so um, intimidated by the size of Premiere Pro. And yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely, that. that's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what's up chat? How every Hi everybody, how's it going? Where are you guys from? Let us know. Uh, and I guess whenever you're ready, if you want to show some work or uh, jump into our project today, we can go ahead and get sure started. Sure thing. I'm going to start by sharing 
my Instagram because this is where my video journey started. This is my Instagram page. And if you scroll down, when did I start doing video? Started doing video way down here. Started having a lot of fun with it. I think these were some of my first videos that I put on Instagram. Um, I think this was my first Instagram video share. And for me as a visual artist, a lot of times when I'm taking photos, I'm asking myself what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling. And when movement is part of that narrative, I think about how can I capture that movement? And, and sometimes that speaks to video. So this was my very first Instagram video and it was kind of on the textures of elephants. Wow. And then I did a few more, one on the movement of snakes, because I, I, I love the you know, slow motion movement. I'm shooting all of this at 120 frames per second. I was shooting this at high def. I'm now doing a lot of 4K, but this is where I started to really geek out is the fact that the slow motion video started revealing the patterns and the wings of, of, of bees. And, you know, when I was a kid, my favorite toy was this explore your backyard with a magnifying glass and a, a microscope. And it was like this, this world that was just so beautiful. And I find for me, photography is the same thing with being able to take photos of details of patterns. And then now all of a sudden being able to alter time with slow motion video. So it's been a big journey and exploration. And I'm kind of excited to share that journey with you. So these I posted and I posted with my hashtags. Nikon no filter, which is a hashtag Nikon does watch. And I ended up booking, um, Nikon called me and asked me if I'd put together a compilation, a celebration of some of my slow motion video. So my first campaign on slow motion video, you see the snake, there's the snake in color this time, but this was my very first slow motion campaign. It wasn't one that I got to go out and photograph, but they wanted me to give a collection of my work. And I was going, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Like I've never, you know, I, I was just kind of making these videos that I loved for my Instagram. And so today we're gonna to talk about making those Instagram posts. I'm gonna show you the process. I'm gonna show you how easy it is in Premiere Pro and, um, I'm also gonna share with you guys how I use videos on my own website. Cause I use videos for, you know, like for instance, we do workshops and in order to advertise, I'm doing a lot of videos to kind of help immerse people into the feeling of what it's like to be out there. And I've noticed that there's a big hybrid on websites that are starting to combine photo and video on their sites. So as you can see, I've got them on, all of our upcoming workshop websites um, from using drone footage here, using slow motion footage. I, I use them in my photojournalism. So um, I think that there's been a, a, a bigger request for, you know, oh, let me back up a little bit. If that's okay. Wait, am I rambling? Yeah, absolutely. No, you <laughs> keep going. I'm, I'm uh, amazed. I, I poured over your work uh, over the weekend and there's always something new, like little clips. <laughs> and, like I didn't see that one. This, so I'm kind of mesmerized, but go on. I think one of the things that I was for some reason fixated on in the beginning of my career is I the beginning of my filmmaking is I felt that I had to be making full films, big documentaries and, and big pieces. And what I was missing is that there is a, a demand for these little visuals that are like, think of them like moving stills, like a photograph inside a series of photographs. And you'll start seeing this more and more on different websites. I use these in conservation storytelling to help people see the species that I'm photographing. And I really do truly think that this is the path to the future, especially for photographers that need to stand out and have a little something extra. I do moving portraits so people can get a little bit more of a feel of the instructors for the workshops. Um, but this is, yeah, something that, and so we're gonna start today with, yeah, some of these, if you guys are into bears, I'm gonna show you how I made some of my bear clips for this website uh, and how you can make bear clip or how you can make clips of your own slow motion. It doesn't have to be bears. It can literally be your dog hanging out the window with the, the wind in their fur or whatever, the, the, the sky, it could be a bee outside. There's so many cool things that you can do to your website or to in your social media. So when people are scrolling through, they see that, that movement. So that's what I'm excited to share today. That all right? <laughs> yeah, that's. I um, mean, just looking at the work is is amazing. Can't wait to see what we're gonna do with these bears. Uh, 
And I, I noticed that you're, you were talking about the, you know, having video on your website. That is really an attention grabber. Like you start to scroll down and it's like, oh, there's another picture. It's a beautiful picture. But then when you catch a video, it's like, oh, this is, you know, you're, you're getting a little bit more about the story. But let's uh, enough about me just going on about your work, which I could do all day. Uh, but let's uh, let's see what you've got planned for us. Wonderful. We are going to open up Adobe Premiere Pro <laughs> and we are going to start with a brand new project here today. I'm going to call this. Um, I love that there's a, a new interface like I'm, I'm really into this new interface. Um, we're going to call it Adobe Bears. Uh, and we will be taking some questions from chat as we go. So I'll be feeding those to you. Also, welcome anybody that's over on uh, YouTube. Um, hi, how's it going? The moderators are going to try and help you get your questions over to us as well. Um, but let's see. And so we're Wade, starting with a, okay. yeah, if, if anything lags, let me know because I, um, while I have a super, like I have a pretty fast computer, I have made proxies that I can switch over to if I need to. Yeah, um, okay. no but so I'm, I, I usually don't use them too much because I have a fast computer and that's a, a, a world that I'll mention briefly, but I want to just start with how I started. And these are high definition videos. They're not 4K or anything like that. So if you're just shooting on um, my favorite is 120 frames per second and pulling them in, um, I, I do make folders on my desktop with all of my selections. So I've got here we go, bear number one. So I've got um, proxies or compressed files that I can attach to these to make my videos look better on your end if they are lagging, because yeah. So I'm gonna, okay, let me step back. I double click on this panel down here that says import media to start. You can also import media right when you open up the, um, the software as well, but I like doing it here. So I double click here and then I go to my folder folder number one. And here's all of my favorite clips. I will say when you start taking the clips and taking photos and videos, when you start taking videos, um, they don't look too good until you slow them down because they'll play back at like 30 frames per second. Frame rate is something really important that we do need to talk about. That's the one bit of math that we got, you know, you got to make sure that you understand and I'll make it as easy as possible. But whenever you're making video, you've got to think about playback for the most part being either 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Okay. Um, and when you're shooting at 120 frames per second, you're getting all these extra frames. So taking those 120 frames and moving it down to a playback speed of 30 frames per second is what slows down that footage. Okay. So that's the one little complicated thing. And that's how slow-mo works. There's all different slow motion um, capabilities on different cameras. There's 60 frames per second. I've heard of a lot faster speeds and things like that. I love 120 frames per second. So here are all my clips that I've done 120 frames per second. This was all with my Nikon Z7. And what I'm going to show you first is I just want to show you what the clips look like before I slow them down because they don't look too good. <laughs> and I don't want anyone to be scared or intimidated when they start shooting. And to be completely honest, Wildlife moves so fast that I, a lot of times, am not on a tripod and I'm shooting video handheld with using camera stabilization and vibration reduction. But you get clips that are crazy. I'm just going to drag these clips to my timeline. The timeline is here. And as you see, this is going to look bad, but I have to show it to you guys. Do you see how jittery it is and how up and down and you see all the movements, right? So that's what the clips are going to look like with the playback in the camera. You can see the, yeah, I'm definitely not. Oh, this one, hey, I want to show you my favorite. It's Sparkle Run. But it, these bears are like all over the place, right? And so is my stabilization. It is all over the place. You guys are seeing my raw video, which is kind of scary. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's fine. This, if you're going to show it anywhere, this is the place to show it. People want to see the down and dirty and then the magic at the end. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, one of the reasons I'm starting with this one is because I did start my journey with video in black and white because of the, it took me a little while to get better with color and we're going to move on to color after this. So we're going to do our first clip in black and white. I'm going to get uh, rid of this whole timeline. Yes, Wade. I was going to say, we're going to start with a little question here. Um, Laura is asking, 
uh, how did you get into this career? Like, I know it's a broad question, but, uh, photography. Oh my gosh. That could be the whole two hour segment. <laughs> it was such a, I actually went to school for electrical and computer engineering. I never thought I would be a photographer. Oh, wow. And then I inherited, before I went to college, I actually inherited my grandfather's camera when he passed away and me being so shy and introverted, I hid behind it and I started to remember him when I, when I was taking pictures. So I became all of a sudden, like I became the center of attention. I could be at the foot of stages of concerts. I could be on the field during these big sporting events and the camera helped bring me out of my shell. And it's beautiful because the camera is a tool for us to, to record our passions and my passions have changed. I photographed and videoed like all sorts of different subjects, but my main passion has always been nature and nature conservation is something I've been really digging hard into for the last five years. Uh, it did take me a long time to be full-time nature. I'm going to be honest with that. I had to shoot a lot of weddings and <laughs> probably yeah. well over three, 400 of them, but help me buy the yeah. gear, help me travel the world. And now I'm here and I'm really excited to be a full-time nature yeah. photographer and cinematographer. <laughs> I, I have several friends that are, are ha some are still in, but have gone that whole wedding photographer career. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's good work. It's good work. It's great it is, work. Yeah. And it's so beautiful to give somebody something that they're going to love and cherish and show their children in that heirloom. Like it felt very um, fulfilling in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I'm glad <laughs> I'm doing full time wildlife now. I do yes. miss the weddings. But um, yeah, it's 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 nice. All right, so here's the Premiere interface. Um, you've got all these different panels. If your panels don't look like mine, you can go up to Window and make sure you've got the correct workspace, the right panels, everything there. So if something looks different, go check out your workspace. Um, this is your timeline. This is where all the information goes for your video. And this is the media. This is where all your little media clips are. And wait, if you have any way of more articulating or if I'm saying something wrong, just... Oh, no. Uh, no. no, I mean, you're, you're fine. Yeah. Um, do you have a specific workspace, like something you've customized and saved for how you work, or do you just go with the default? I just go with the default. Hey, <laughs> I classic. keep things simple. It's classic. This yes, is, absolutely. Yeah, this is exactly how I do it. Um, okay, so, but now I do want to, if I drag and drop my videos here to the timeline, it'll create a timeline based on the videos. Uh, that'll that'll try to match the frame rate. I find that the the high speed doesn't actually quite match up. Um, I actually always go here to file new, and then I do sequence. So file new and sequence. Um, and then under the settings, I like controlling my sequence. I like knowing everything about it, and I like controlling exactly what it what it has on there. I'm a big fan. When I said 30 frames per second, what I actually meant was 29.97 frames per second, but people refer to that as 30. And I find that to be a great frame rate for nature video. Uh, a lot of times when you see people in movies and that cinematic feel, that's done at that 24 frames mm -hmm. per second. But for me, I'm constantly moving the 120 frames per second, then I shoot down to 30 frames per second. Uh, the last setting I was doing was a TikTok setting. I'm not making a TikTok right now. Um, so high def is 1080, 1080 um, on the vertical by 1920 on the horizontal. They talk about those numbers a lot of times with the, the vertical number being the one they talk about. Let me know if I'm saying that all right. So 4K is actually um, you know, 2160 on right, the vertical right. and 3840 yes. on the, the, the horizontal. Exactly. And we'll talk a little bit about HD tomorrow, but or um, 4K tomorrow, but not today. Um, I keep it on 709 for anything that I'm doing um, that, that's not super high quality. If I'm doing like a Nikon campaign, sometimes I'll use this one, Rec 2100. But for what we're doing for website, everything today, it's going to be in Rec 701. Um, and usually when I'm doing the higher quality, I'll, I'll, I'll check all of these boxes, all the high quality boxes, but I'm not going to do that today because it's going to, you know, maybe at a cost of a little bit of um, information in the, the file itself, but it'll help make this nice and speedy for this presentation. Um, and then I'm going to click OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a sequence. OK, or, and uh, you can name this however you want. I'm usually lazy and it's usually sequence one for me. <laughs> I could have named it, you know, bears running or something like that, but I right. didn't. Um, and now I've got all of my clips over here 
and my media panel. What I'm going to do, I actually want all of these clips to not be at 120 frames per second. I want them to be at 29 frames per second, 30 frames per second. So here's the math. You take your final frame rate, which for me is 30 frames per second, and you divide it by what you shot at. So I divide 30 by 120. And what you get is 0.25 or 25%. That's the only math you have to do. <laughs> okay. If you're shooting yeah. at 60 frame rate and you're trying to get down to this 29 or this 30 frame rate, so 60, you, you divide those numbers and you get a half, you get 50% for your speed. That's the math. And it scares so many people, yeah. but that's all you have to do is divide your target frame rate by your shooting frame rate. That's it. It's okay. just a small amount of math. Stay with us, everyone. <laughs> just stay with us. So now I'm going to go over in my project panel, and I am going to hold down the control, and I'm going to select all of my movie files, because it's also put my sequence files over here, too. But I just want the movie files. And I'm going to right-click here. And when I right-click, it says speed and duration. So I can go in the speed and duration and change this to... 25%. Now it matches my target output, right? I hit OK, and it's made all of these clips slow motion for me so that the playback matches. Now I can take them and drop them to my timeline. I just say keep existing settings. I like the settings I put in there. But now, as you can see, you've got everything slow motion. Hang on, let me mute this because I am I'm hitting this in button right here on my audio track because I'm not going to use any of this audio. Mm -hmm. Um, especially for something for a website and audio, something we'll talk about a little bit later. But you see there, it does not look a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I, you can you can start to see the, the slow-mo without any screen tearing or any of the, the action going on. There was a question earlier, um, and maybe because there's a little bit of camera movement here, Laura asked, um, what would you recommend for camera stabilization and vibration reduction when shooting wildlife? Great question. I do like that a lot of the lenses have much better vibration reduction. The mirrorless cameras along with mirrorless lenses have crazy amounts of stabilization when paired together. I'm more of a video monopod fan. This was back at the beginning of my journey into video. So I, I shot all this handheld, which is kind of a little bit crazy, but that's sometimes what you have. And, um, you know, if you happen to be somewhere of like Alaska or somewhere where a bee starts hovering in front of your camera, you may not have time to set up those tripods. So I do have a tripod. I have a Manfrotto um, carbon tripod that's actually got my camera on it today. And then I like the monopods because I can move a lot quicker and I find that I can pivot and, and, and um, photograph the wildlife a lot quicker. And the, the, the last campaign I just did for Nikon, I used a tripod and a monopod for pretty much everything. So I'm moving in that direction. That's a, that's a great question, Laura, and uh, keep keep it up, chat. Keep sending us questions. So we do have this little, um, all these icons here, um, which has the razor tool. I use the razor tool a lot because one of the things that I find with video is I'm constantly just taking time to cut it, cut it, cut it. Like that's what I'm doing majority of the time is I'm, I have a very short attention span. I shoot days and days of film for like, a three minute piece, <laughs> but a lot of it is, is chopping it up and just really cutting out as much as you don't need. And here, I think my favorite part was right around here where you see, right. I liked that where that one paw came in. Right. So I'm going to go back to that on the timeline and I'm going to chop it by using this razor tool and just clicking on the timeline there. Right. And then right when it stops, right when that foot lands, I'm going to click it again. So I just wanted that one foot landing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to the selection tool. I'm going to click this selection and I am going to hit the delete button. Just get rid of all of that. Right. Because this is what I do. I just there was one other clip and you have to go through this on your own time and kind of find the spots that you like. I really liked that back leg walking. So I'm going to just cut there cut at the beginning, cut at the end, and then I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and I'm gonna delete that. So I've got that next step. And that's all I really want with the bear in the water here. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna delete that, all right? So now the next clip is another bear in water, but it's wider. 
So I might get one shot. Let me see, where do I like it? I kind of kept going down and up with my exposures, as you can see, because I really wanted that silhouette. There were uh, concerns for your safety asking how close were you <laughs> on that last, that last set of clips? I had a 500 millimeter lens and a bear expert with me. So I am a big advocate of hiring experts that will help make sure that I'm not, oh, I like that clip right there. That's good. So I'm just going to, you can also do the razor tool or you can drag the end of the clip to where it is on, on the blue line. So now I've got these three clips that have the tight of the legs and then kind of a wider shot. So now wherever I drag and drop this on the timeline is where it's going to be placed. And one of the things that I like is you can right click on empty space and click this ripple yes. delete and get rid of all of this negative space. So now I've got a little bit of a sequence starting where it goes from the tight shot to the loose shot to the tight shot. Okay, so it's starting to kind of work together a little bit, right? And whenever you're out filming, I highly recommend trying to get closer and looser shots and different angles because you're going to need them for clipping. So a lot of it is moving around. This was one of my other favorite moments. Like these bears were in the mist in the background and they were fighting. And I decided to focus in on this grass because I like the shadow of the fight. I thought it was kind of cool. So that's where the that ends for me. But I really liked the beginning. I like when that bear lunges up right there. So I'm going to start this. I'm going to hit my back arrow. Let me know if I need to. If I'm going too slow, too fast. I want to no, make sure good. that you're good. This is good for uh, everybody. This uh, this clip uh, is amazing, by the way. It is. I, I actually watched this one several times and was like, <laughs> is this composited? Is there some trickery going on here? Uh, it's really nice. It was funny. There were so many photographers out there, but people were scared of the mist. And a lot of times when situations are a little bit crazy, that's when you get the most unique footage. So keep shooting through the bad weather and things like that and just see what you can do with it, you know? Uh, I took a few photography classes uh, when I was in college. And we waking up early, finding a misty, foggy morning, was it was like... Like godsend, like it was perfect. Yeah, was like, right? This is it. This is why I'm doing this. Let's go. Oh, right. So I'm just kind of cutting this up as we're talking, if that's all right. And that's I right. love, this is the part that I love. I didn't like this bear that was kind of being boring, but right here <laughs> is the money shot, right? When the bear gets in and bites the other bear's butt. Yeah, that's my shot. I love that shot. All right. And as you can see, like another thing is to be completely honest, like, I didn't know a lot of what I was doing back then. And, um, you know, my colors aren't as great as they are. It was really misty. It was really ugly colors, and which is another reason why, you know what, let's make these contrasty black and whites, which is really easy to do, you know? So here's another bear fight. I've got the board bear in there. Let's see if we got a shot. Yeah, here we go. So let's see if we've got a shot of them fighting. Yeah, I think it was this one that I liked. Where it goes up. Yep. I think that's it cool ending shot what do you guys think all right so we'll go with that and i'm just cutting things down that's what i'm constantly doing is cut oops you can always control z things or apple what is it on a mac it's not control it's apples apple z to undo on a mac uh yeah uh, command z or control z okay Command or control. All right, so now we've got the clips that we want to keep. I'm going to right click and ripple delete and keep things nice and close. But now we want to play with the order. I like this bear mist shot because I think that it's a really cool establishing shot. So I'm going to take that and pull that to the very front. I'm going to keep my three bear walking shots. And then I'm going to go into the fight and into the end that's that. So this is kind of my sequence that I've got going here. And I'm just going to ripple delete and make everything nice and tight. Um, so yeah, and a lot of times I'm going in and making the, the clips. I can expand this timeline by using this so I can see by bringing the two dots together is what I call it. <laughs> I'm sure there's probably something yeah. more technical, but I call it bringing the dots together. Um, so you bring the dots together, you expand your timeline. If you bring them apart, you, um, you know, uh, you make your timeline smaller. Well, or my, I'm dyslexic. Let me know if I got that yeah, right. You're... Okay. Um, cause I would probably honestly make these clips shorter cause of my super short attention span. I still think everything is too long. All right. So now I'm going to make everything kind of work together, which is really cool. Cause I can 
Let me move us. I can go over. So, at this <laughs> point, are you you have these clips kind of narrowed down? Are you trying to like just do what looks cool? Or are you trying to find a narrative in just a few clips? Or what what is the process right here? Or for this, it's all eye candy. It's okay. eye candy for Instagram, eye candy for the website. But I am thinking of sequence. I'm thinking of establishing shot, which I like the grass in the foreground. I'm thinking of the walking in. Like I can easily use this on a website, like get people intrigued because the bear's walking in, go to the drama and then end with the fight drama. So I find that I like pairing emotions and kind of taking people on a little bit of a roller coaster with, you know, have that intense moment and then have the release or have, you know, something, if I have a funny shot, a lot of times I'll put it after really intense shots just to kind of like, um, you know, I think of like uh, Spielberg and you know, dinosaurs running after the car and then you see the window and it says objects may be closer than they appear. Like that little bit of comedy to break intensity is like, and that's the great thing about doing this work is whenever I watch movies and film, I'm like, I'm researching. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, sure. I yeah. am I'm I'm Absolutely. learning yes I need to go to the movies tonight it'll be an <laughs> educational trip right <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> but you can find inspiration from all over with that and when I started getting into filmmaking I started like watching a lot of nature documentaries I started looking at a lot of um you know, even comic books and how different shots are established in a comic book from, you know, Japanese manga is great. You see that establishing shot, that detail shot and, and trying to break things apart. And I honestly, like I had a teacher years and years ago, and I, I do this to a lot of my students that made me find things I was passionate about watching on TV or something. And then they made me reverse storyboard it. So pause every single break mm -hmm. and draw a picture. I mean, yeah. my drawing is horrible. So it was like stick figure here, stick figure frog, stick figure. It, it was funny, but I, it, it really helped me understand the breakdown of how things are working. And there's things in this that I would say don't work quite yet. Like, I don't like that these shots are too close. And when you go from here with this running shot to the next running shot, it just looks clippy. So I actually have something that I like doing that may, you know, I, I, I don't do this in my own photos, but I take a few more liberties with video. Um, then in one of the things that I do in video sometimes is I go over on this effects panel and I go to video effects here and I go to transform and then I go to horizontal flip. So I'll flip the last run. So now it's going this way and then it runs that way. And now the clips seem to, in my opinion, they work better together, having that run one direction and run the other instead of it just looking. And I, I, I do that a lot where I clip things back and forth, which it's funny because I don't reflect like for anything. I've, I've been doing um, some stories that have gone online for National Geographic and stuff like that. And I would never flip a, a photo like um, there's very, um, you know, especially like I would never flip a photo for a story I was doing for them or something like that. Like there's. You know, I, I have like a, a bunch of digital art that I'll play with while I play with reflections and I've, I've worked with um, Paco on streams and shown people that. But at the same time, like video, I find that, um, yeah, people take more liberties. Yeah. Flipping so footage. It's a little looser uh, with how you treat some of the, the clips, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And especially with like things having to like, well, I don't know. It's kind of like you get, I mean, when you're discussing or talking about going to movies and, and doing research, you get all of those tips from those mm -hmm. movies. How many times have you seen, uh, you know, a shot in a movie and you're like, they reversed that or they did this. <laughs> they're, they're just trying to tell a story and that's all you are too, yeah. I guess. So. Exactly. I have not, and I mean, it could just be like my limited time in the field. I've not encountered any field in film or video where flipping was unacceptable. I just haven't. Um, so, and it may just be, yeah, like I said, maybe one day I'll encounter that with some of the stuff that I'm working on. But um, yeah, for now, I feel like, yeah, I flip, I flip footage. I'll admit it from here. I flip my footage. There you go. Um, all right. And so now one of the things that you also have to do is you have to kind of like make your color match. And this was one of the situations where I was like, wow, you know, I shot this high def, I don't have 4k, I didn't have 10 bit, I didn't have any of that stuff. So it would be, and I was really inexperienced when I started doing these. And um, so I decided to just make this all black and white. I love black and white. It's a nice feel. The color doesn't add to the narrative here. I don't think it does. In my opinion, it doesn't. Um, so we're going to talk real quick about how I edited that. And I did that all with this luminary color 
okay? So over on the right side, you'll see luminary color. And this has, the thing that I love about Adobe products is there's things that I've learned from Lightroom and Photoshop and ways that I developed my own editing that moving from stills to motion or, you know, there's familiarity without me ever having gone in this before I click on basic correction and look, I've got all the same, not exactly the same, but I've got my exposure, my contrast, my shadows, my blocks. It looks very similar to the interface in Lightroom. You got your temperature, your tent, you know, saturation. So I'm like, Oh, awesome. I'm used to editing photos. Uh, so I found that, you know, simple things like for black and white, for me, I always just drop my saturation and I love adding my contrast. I love popping my whites just a little bit and popping my blocks because I like even more contrast. And I am a huge fan of a vignette. I put a vignette on just about everything. So vignette darkens the edges of the screen and that will help keep people's eyes inside the frame because it got that little dark. So now as you see, yeah, that's kind of how I like the shadow shot. Um, so here, this bare paw, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to go to basic correction. I'm going to drop those, drop that saturation. I, a lot of times bring things darker and then bring my highlights up. It's just kind of one of my editing techniques. Um, so I'm just going to play with this now. Okay. You guys remember that I took the front paw walking and the back paw walking from the same clip. So these were shot with the same exposures on my camera. They look exactly the same. So I can just right click on this clip and copy it. And when I click on this clip here, I can right click again and say paste attributes. Okay. And you can select what you're pasting. You know, if you're changing your time or doing anything, or if you have a flip or things like that, I only want the color selected. I do that. And all of a sudden I've got the same black and white, which is great. Right? Yeah. This one was a little bit darker, so I'm going to have to pop the exposures just a bit. But as you can see, I'm just playing with it the same way I would in Lightroom. And then the sparkle run, my favorite, do the same thing. I'm going to do black and white, add some contrast. I am going to do my exposure up a little bit. I'm going to add my blacks to make those silhouettes really nice and sharp. Let me pull the highlights. I want a lot of contrast. Let's see. How does that look? That looks pretty consistent. I think that looks good. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to copy. I'm going to right click here and go to paste. And you can select a whole bunch of bunch of these clips, you know, so I could select all of them if I wanted them all edited the same way. I'm going to actually, now that I look at it, this one needs to be shortened. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this, pull it to the right, right click and ripple delete. I noticed it was a little bit long for me. Um, same thing here. I'm going to go in and pull the saturation down contrast. All right. So let's see, how does this look? Does this look all right? And you know, I'd probably spend a lot more time chopping it down even more and more and more, but right now it's a 22 second piece, which is great for Instagram, great for a website. Um, yeah. And I think this would be a really cool little now. Another thing that I like doing is, is over on the effects side is we can, um, very easily add transitions. So you know how I pulled down video effects to do my um, horizontal flip earlier? I can pull down video transitions and do a dissolve. And I like adding a dip to black. So it's pretty easy. You just do a drag to drop. And now at the end of this intense fight, it goes to black, right? Fades out. I like a fade out. Um, and I can pull this. All I have to do is with my selection tool selected, I can go to the right of this dip to black and I can move it and make it longer or shorter. So I can have a bigger or shorter dip out. Right. And I can even take different transitions. You've got dissolves that cross between, you know, the first clip and the second clip. You've got all sorts of different video transitions that you can use according to your own aesthetics. But I think this is pretty good for a first little clip and I'm going to show you guys. Yeah, so now I'm just going to go to file and export, export media. And I love like, it, it's been only recently that there's all these like really a ton of more options here. Like I was so excited. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Have so some, cool. Tons of options. So cool. So you can go in here and you got to name whatever you're going to name. And I'm going to name it like KO Bears, KO's initials. 
Um, and you can right here tell it where the location that you want it to be saved. I'm under desktop Adobe Slow Motion, which is what I'm doing today. And now you can go to, you know, this is match source, which, you know, I just want to match the sequence. I put together a good sequence. I want it to export at that sequence. Um, but it's really cool because you can, you know, if you want to downsize it, I wouldn't recommend upsizing. See this 21, um, 2160 is 4K and this is not shot in 4K. So you can't just make it 4K and have it work. <laughs> you can't just add pixels that aren't there. So anything oh, that's- if we could. If we could, that would be quite amazing, right? Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I went shopping for a TV the other day and they were talking about how it upsizes 4K to 8K. And I'm like, Ooh, yeah. I don't know if you, I don't know, I don't know if that works, <laughs> but yeah. I, I, you know. Just, just don't put, off, put that on the bullet point for trying to sell that, that television. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I, I don't know where you're, where, where are you getting these numbers, but it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to name the name of that company because I'm not sure if that was accurate, but um, anything that's 1080 or below would be great. Like 720 if you're looking for something lower, maybe you need something smaller for your website, but check this out. More presets, right? You can put in here like Facebook, if I can type, and it's got all the presets already for Facebook. It's got presets already for like in... Oh, it doesn't have Instagram, but Facebook and Instagram, I do Facebook and then I move that over to Instagram, which, you know, this full HD tends to be great for Instagram for me. Um, but yeah, you can click on one of these presets and hit OK. And then when you export it, it's going to have it optimized for Facebook. Right. How cool is that? Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you're right. They, these are I mean, they've been in there a while, but uh, just adding more and more as a, with every update. It's uh, it's always fun to see what what <laughs> they've concluded when you go to export something after an update. Um, yeah, exactly. And they've even got like um, instant upgrade or instant integration with your Facebook, with your Behance, with your YouTube, you know, all these different channels, which is it just it, it's making it so easy. I do one final check and I look at my output, make sure it's at that twenty nine point nine seven, make sure everything looks good here. And then you can hit export and it's going to make that video for you. I'm not going to hit export. I don't need to make this video, but if you hit export, it'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> we trust, we trust that it would work. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'm just, uh, gonna... there was a question about, um, when you go on these outdoor shoots, uh, do you, you and me, you had mentioned having an, an expert with you. Do you uh, also al always or sometimes go alone or always in groups or how does that work? Not for bears. So bears, there's a group, <laughs> there's an expert, there's, you know, somebody that is making sure. And I, the last two campaigns I've done, I've made sure to consult with wildlife experts. And um, I did a last three, I've had wildlife experts like right on call the whole time. Like I did um, one for for B and H and, and we had, we hired a guide the whole time. I did one for Nikon and we hired a um, conservation biologist um, just to make sure that we had little to no impact on the nice. wildlife. It's something that's very important. And my last campaign for Nikon was on birds and I did my research. I, I was calling every place and I'm like, all right, you've got a hummingbird feeder. How often do you change it? What do you do? I was so like, I went to the Audubon Society's website. I looked at all the ethical ways of having bird feeders and I drilled them before I supported any business that might not be treating the animals correctly. Oh, nice. um, so I made sure everything was, um, you know, and I think that like when you're going to parks too, it's really nice because the National Park Service and, and a lot of times like the Forest Service and um, different organizations that protect wild spaces, they have information on their website about approaching wildlife, how far you can stand from wildlife, what, you know, like what's an appropriate distance. And, and you know, there's a beautiful way to do research and make sure everything that you're doing isn't hurting or impacting the wildlife. So that was a great that's, question. <laughs> great yeah. question. And that's a great practice. Definitely. Um, so what's, what do you have planned for us next? Hmm. What's going on? We're going to make more of these. We're going to do baby steps. Is that okay? We got a lot of time Absolutely. today. So Absolutely. my, yeah. my, my faster. time off. Yeah. It <laughs> goes faster or slow as you'd like. And we'll, uh, chat, will set the pace. Um, Wonderful. If you're just coming in here, we are with, uh, uh, wildlife photographer, um, <laughs> videographer, filmmaker, uh, Christy Odom. Um, if you're watching on, uh, YouTube, welcome. Uh, I will try and uh, get your 
questions uh, through our moderator, Cody Bear, today. We'll be uh, trying to fun funnel your questions from YouTube over to us at Behance. If you want to join us on Behance, you are more than welcome. Uh, Behance.net slash live. Um, all right, let's see what's... See what hey, Cody right. Bear. <laughs> We've got bears all around. We're going to do another bear clip. We're going to do a yes. shorter bear clip, but we're going to do a color one. So super short, and then we'll move on from bears doing um, the next clip after this will be a hummingbird clip that will work for TikTok and Instagram. So we'll do a, a short clip that does the same thing we just did, but it deals with color. Um, so I'm gonna double click here on my import media. I'm gonna go into my folder. See, these are all the folders I have. I have color, I have a sword bill hummingbird, I have storms and, oh, do you guys wanna see this? Okay, cause this, I made this for you guys. I can show this to you real quick before we get into our next one. This is a basically recording of my camera settings. So if you guys are curious how I set up my camera, I made you a little film, not a film, but just, yeah, of, of, of what I'm doing now. Everybody. Oh no, I did a video recording of this stuff. So it should move so you can see the eye tracking and everything. So I set my camera up for the stuff I'm doing now. I'm doing everything 4K which is 2160, which is, you know, 2160 by that 3840, which is the 4K setting. So when you see in your camera, you'll see all these different settings. Um, anything that's got these faster frame rates, 120 or 60, those are things that you can move down to slow motion. Obviously the 120, you can make 25%, whereas the, you know, for a, a 30, 30 frames per second output and the 60, you can make down 50%. So you can speed up time or slow down time. Um, and if you see the 1080 next to the 120, that's giving you a high definite, high definition um, video at 120 frames per second. One of the great things about shooting in 4K, even if you're not making 4K, even if you're just doing stuff for Instagram or Facebook or your website, you can crop in, which is lovely. I could like crop in super tight to my footage and um, get even more details because if you if you're capturing a 2160 and then you're creating something that's 1080 you've got all of this extra cropping ability and you can get like details about well, toucan's yeah. eyes and that uh that goes right along with uh cody uh, there's a question from youtube uh do you worry about uh horizontal or vertical for facebook slash instagram so that probably Ooh. answers some of that yeah, if I'm shooting a 4K, I don't have to worry about it. But if I'm um, I'm starting, I, I need to embrace TikTok more. So I need to do more vertical filming. And I keep telling myself I should do more vertical it's filming. So <laughs> I, I don't, it's so funny because like right when I got into photography, like vertical was a thing because people wanted magazine covers. Like they were all thinking of these like, you know, I want to be on the cover of Nat Geo or Rolling Stone or whatever. So people were shooting a lot for vertical. And then we went to an era where it was like, horizontal all the way. You look at competitions and I would say 95% of winners were all like horizontal images and we're reaching an era now where we're going back to the vertical, which I think is like, I'm like, wait, 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 what happened to the last like decade that we were all about horizontal? Like, oh my gosh. But, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. And film is always usually horizontal or extremely horizontal. So yeah. you kind of, I, I think anything goes now, as long as it works for the format you're putting it on. <laughs> Uh, a couple of things about my camera setting. I do 10 bit color now, which gives me a lot more information in my color. Um, you can also with the Z9 shoot in, in raw, which is like a raw photograph and it has like a ton of color. Um, so it's really exciting that you can now do that internally in the Z9. Um, and when I was doing this shoot, that update hadn't been applied yet. So um, hadn't been released, let me say. Um, so I'm shooting constantly at 10 bit. You can shoot at 8 bit. And I, th you know, a lot of times like with video, it's good to kind of start simple, um, especially if you want to see if your computer can handle the files and things like that. Um, but when you start getting into, oh my gosh, I want more color in my files. You know, a lot of times I would recommend like looking into 10 bit color or, or I haven't really started the, I just, well, let me rephrase that. I've just started in raw and it's glorious. It does take a lot of power on that computer. But um, so yeah, I'm shooting constantly at um, 120 at 4K. Um, I did make a mistake here. I shouldn't keep it at auto um, white balance because that might flip back and forth. I don't recommend this. I don't know why I did that here. Um, but yeah, and I've got my autofocus on full-time autofocus with an animal eye tracking on wide area large, just for, I'm assuming there's a lot of photographers in the audience. And you can see here, the animal eye tracking will pick up the toucan's eye and it's keeping that with a full-time autofocus in focus. Um, I had a lens that had a built-in teleconverter, which is why I was able to like 
clip from this to this. So I was able to like use that. And that's what the TC is here is the built-in teleconverter. Um, but yeah, wide area with the animal eye tracking all time full. So this is, and I shoot with, um, picture control, just neutral. So this is how I have my camera set up and you can see here. The other two can uh, comes in and a couple of questions. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> <Not>. <laughs> a little fight there. Yeah. There's a question about what NL means top right of the screen. NL is um, like a, nat a natural light. It's like a, you know, um, it's the picture control. And I think it's picture mm -hmm. control. It's just like kind of a, 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 a very baseline. Like when I'm doing photos, a lot of times I'm doing a vivid. As you can see in this image, it's not as vivid of colors because I'm, I'm, I don't want anything to be too punchy because it's hard to pull things back, but it's easy to enhance color in post. So a lot of times I'm shooting at standard or NL with my picture control just to kind of have this neutral, less intense, if that makes sense. So that's what that is there. And I'm constantly like one of the other ways to start with your shutter speed is to think about like twice your frame rate for shutter speed. So me um, shooting 120 frames per second, um, which you can see here, I'm shooting at one 250th of my shutter speed, which it's funny because a lot of people ask me, they're like, oh, you can take stills while you're doing video and you know, all this stuff. And you know, are you doing that? And I'm like, no, actually, because I like different shutter speeds for photos than I do for video. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly either on photo mode or video mode, but I'm not mixing the two. Like I know you can in your cameras. Great question though. Oh, you can see. Yeah. And then, oh, here's where the, you're going to see all this footage. Um, but I, I thought I had other clips in here. Oh yeah. Look at these two. And it's cool. Cause yeah. So you see the little eye tracking work and it goes back and forth when this one moved its head, so which was pretty the, cool. The eye tracking is uh, assisting with focus or is it just, what, it what is, is assisting it? with focus. Okay. So it's, it's, it's keeping that full time auto. And it's really nice because I it, like video used to be so complicated with having to have focus rings and having mm -hmm. to like, you know, and the cameras are getting so good that it, like with the animal eye tracking, you can just lock in and it'll stay there and stay yeah. in focus. And you can also control with a lot of cameras, you can control the speed of how quickly it, it moves like say this moves from bird one to bird two like see it's gonna oh if this uh, the other bird if it looked back it would have um but it it you can control the speed of that so you can make it like mm -hmm. focus really fast back and forth or focus really slow back and forth and that's another artistic aesthetic that people have that's you know might be different but cool. yeah so do you guys like my little video i made for you and this is another feature that i use a lot for um video which is i put my camera on manual like here there's no eyes it's really hard to focus so i put my focus on manual and i use what's called focus peaking and what that does is it throws this um you know different colors you can choose your color i like blue um, but you can you can manually focus and it'll it'll have a blue light on what's in focus in the camera. So if you're doing like a hard silhouette like this through the snow with the texture, um, you can, you know, make sure that your image is in focus by using focus peaking. So that's one of my other cool. favorite modes I wanted to show you. <laughs> uh, this I wasn't even shooting at 4K. I was shooting at um, I was shooting this at well, I, yeah, I was shooting it at 4K, but I was shooting at 30. So I wasn't shooting it at 120 frames per second. I was shooting it um, just at the 30 frame rate. So I didn't have to, yeah. Anyways, but I made that's that for cool, you guys. So you can yeah, that's a cool see inside some camera home. settings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> inside my camera. <laughs> All right. But we don't need that. So I just, yeah, I was excited to share that. Okay. We have another, we have another tech question. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say are the advantages of Nikon Z collection compared to Sony Alpha or Canon? Jeez. I guess if you've used those, you may be able to. I have not used the Sony systems, so okay. I'm not the best person for an answer to that. All I know is that I am obsessed with my gear and I'm pretty excited with the stuff I'm producing with it. I'm, I'm a Nikon fan through and through. <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's really interesting because um, if you do, if you are curious about those things, like a lot of times, like you can rent gear. Um, I highly recommend if you're thinking about making a camera switch to rent gear, play with it, <laughs> play with it a lot. Um, a camera switch is a big deal. I made a camera switch about 10 years ago and um, I, I, I will never regret that or look back. Um, but it was definitely a, um, a big change and everything like that, but it ultimately helped my 
it, it, it helped me out because I found the right system for me. Nice. <laughs> Explore so. your options and then, then choose. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this, we're just going to do a really short, this was actually shot, not with a mirrorless. This was shot with a, um, I think this was my D850. And as you can see, when I pulled it in, it already says 29.97. I did shoot this in slow motion, but a lot of times like the cameras will have these automatic slow motion functions. So they'll have like, if you see 30 times four or 30 times five, those are slow motion functions that are shooting at the 120 frames, but they're already doing that slowing down for you. So when you hit that playback, you're going to get 30 frames per second. Um, the 30 times four slows it down to 25%. The times five slows it down to 20%. So those numbers are, um, you know, if, if you're not, if you don't want to do that, right click, change your speed duration. If you want it to be a little easier, a lot of times you can bypass some steps. I did this some of the first time I put my camera on slow motion. I don't do that anymore because when you capture things at 120 frames per second, you're also capturing audio at real time. And a lot of times I'm pulling bird calls and I'm pulling different ambient noises from nature. And if I was to do that on a setting that automatically slowed down the footage that did the times four times five, you'd get the long distorted, you know, calls and yeah. you, you wouldn't get that really nice chirp. And um, one little secret that I do is not really secret. I found that if I've got like a bird chirping or calling or whatever, I play that back in real time, but the footage in slow motion, and it, it actually doesn't look weird, <laughs> which I'm like, that's super cool. And one of the things you got to make sure you always get the right bird calls to the right birds because people will notice. <laughs> yeah, like, I think it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny the movies that have the big eagles and you hear this big oh, yeah. eagle sound, yeah, but that's not what. Screech. Yeah. That's not what an eagle sounds like. An eagle has like a totally different sound. A lot of the movies pair like a hawk screech with an eagle. And I'm like, what? Those don't match. But, you know, I don't think a lot of people notice that. <laughs> there are people that notice it, though. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I like matching the correct bird yeah, songs. Yeah, if, if you post it, <laughs> someone will point it out. If, you put, if it's wrong, someone will definitely point it out. <laughs> So I pulled these three clips in. They're already 29.97, so I don't have to do anything there. And, you know, I could technically just on this circumstance, just drag and drop because the default sequence, like if you drag and drop, you make your new. Oh, let me see. Am I not dragging it? Uh, all right. I'm going to just make my sequence how I normally do it. New sequence. Cool. Um, and when you're in here and you're doing this, like say the frame size, I want to, um, on the horizontal, I want this 1920 again by 1080. So when you have a setting that you like here, um, I'm going to use that 709 again. Um, you can also save this as a preset and that's what I've done. So I can save this as, you know, um, 1080 KO. It's my normal 1080 mm -hmm. KO for my initials. Um, and I can put a little description in there if I want, but now it's going to pop up under sequence presetting and I can just click on this and I can create. Yeah. So I don't have to go through all those steps again. Right. Yeah. Uh, anything that, that makes the process more efficient is, is huge. Exactly. So this is a super short clip of a bear and a waterfall. One of the things that I've noticed that makes really compelling um, slow motion is whenever you have like one of the elements, you know, wind, water, earth, you know, like dirt coming up, like elements work so fire works so well with slow motion. <laughs> so whenever I have something that I can use that involves an element with wildlife, like it's just, that's like gold in my book, you know? Um, so yeah, being able to photograph bears around water or by waterfalls, this is at Brooks Falls is like, yeah, kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm going to just scrub through this clip really quick. And I apologize if my terms aren't completely accurate. Like I said, I have kind of 
I'm really, for the most part, self-taught with this stuff. So a lot of times, like people use the term terminology. I'm like, what does that do? <laughs> but Wade, you're probably like, oh my god, it's, who am I? No, no, that? it's it's absolutely fine. It's weird though, uh, watching you slow things down because most of my experience with using uh, Premiere Pro uh, is has been speeding things up for time lapse for artwork. So I'm yeah. like going the opposite direction, but this is fascinating. Which is really funny because I'm actually going to talk about that if we have time today because I find that every time I do a slow motion piece, I mix in um, I mix in time lapse, and I think that that's such a fun transition. So the storm clip I have that I'm working on for with the time lapse right now, I'm going to show you guys real quickly how I how I make a time lapse and and you know how you can put that in with your slow motion. Oh, so I mean, I, it's all about too. altering time, right? Speeding yeah. it up, slowing it down. I feel like a magician. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a question about sound. Uh, do you use an external mic uh, when recording audio uh, when filming wildlife? Great question. I actually do because I'm clipping on and off a lot. So I've got a little Zoom. And um, so we're constantly doing, it's actually called a Zoom. Um, we're recording a lot of audio with the Zoom. And to be completely honest, I'm not the best with audio. And a lot of times I'm, um, you know, purchasing um, bird sounds and, and licensing nature sounds. And I'm doing a lot of that as well in my final pieces. Um, but if I, and you know, I'm actually really impressed with my Z9 because it's caught some really beautiful sounds that I've actually cut and incorporated in. Um, so my my um, Z9 campaign, I have some pikas like doing their little chirps that were all from the in-camera mic. Um, so sometimes like I'm finding um, that I'm able to do things. I, having a, a shotgun mic on top mm -hmm. of my camera helps tremendously. Um, so yeah, a lot of times I'm doing the zoom and the shotgun. And I think as like, as I'm starting to get more and more video jobs, um, that's gonna be my next, um, uh, my next investment is, is to have somebody separate for audio because audio is yeah. a world yeah. on its own. And I'm like, and oh it, my gosh. It can definitely <laughs> make, you know, it, it, it definitely, increases or produce you know makes the production value that's what i'm looking for the production value so much more uh you know such more uh, an experience yeah um, for sure for sure all right uh, you see you i'm just a, oh yeah. sorry i was gonna ask one last audio question do you have a a go-to first like if you've uh used an external mic versus a camera mic do you check one for versus the other first i like the externals i do like okay. the zooms yeah, and that's it's also just because I'm stopping and starting my clips a lot and I like the audio to be seamless. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, you know, I do change my exposures a lot and I do move my buttons around a lot. And so sometimes like if I've got that click, 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 like in the middle of oh, yeah. a great yeah. audio bit, it's like, no. And, you know, sense. OK, I'm going to be totally transparent here. Let's do it. Let's I, it. <laughs> I hold my breath when I take photos. And so like and then I gasp. And I a lot of times will have like my camera audio just be like this really ugly, like, <laughs> and I'm like, how do I need to like take a class and learn how to properly breathe for doing filmmaking? Because you, you, you have know? to make a TikTok of just <laughs> your breathing now. It has it's to be done. It's so bad. It's so bad. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, that audio clip would have been epic if I wasn't <laughs> freaking gasping. Like I need to get back into shape. Like mm. it's so embarrassing. Mm. But I don't get that on the Zoom. Like, it's just because my, I, I don't know, I get so excited that I stop breathing a lot when I'm taking pictures. And I, and then like, all of a sudden I'll be like, I gotta take a breath right now. And then it's just this huge gasp. And I'm like, that's mm. amazing. <laughs> it's horrible, right? It's no, horrible. No. I'm like, it's, it's I don't more know. content. Everything's content. So you can just use that <laughs> later for something. People like vulnerability. I should just put it in, right? It is. right. <laughs> so I'm finding these little clips in here. And as you see, I'm just using that razor tool. I'm cutting and deleting things, right? And I've just got a couple of clips because I just want to show you this first because our next one, we are going to talk a little bit more about some of the things you guys are asking. So here's some of my favorite clips of the waterfall. Um, this is where the bear catches the fish. Um, I'm going to break these up. I might have the fish being caught at the very end. So I'm going to do my ripple deletes. And this way it's like you've got the kind of the wider, the tighter, the movement. Super easy. Right? Nice little clip. I've used this one, I think, on my website. But now, same sort of thing. I pick one that's really easy. I do the luminary color. 
Am I saying that right? Luminary? Lum- Lum- uh, Lumetri. 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 I think it's Lumetri. I, I said it wrong when you asked me. <laughs> yeah. Lumetri. What? Lumetri. Lumetri color. Okay. I'm going to do my contrast. And this one, I might add just a touch of saturation. And you've got this great white balance tool. With This is actually, I got this pretty right in camera, but you can click on this and click on something that should be white and it'll balance the, it'll, it'll balance the image. This was, yeah, like pretty spot on. Um, so I like this. It's got more contrast. It looks good to me. Do the same thing. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy. Now I'm going to click on all the other clips. I'm going to put the dots together. <laughs> there you go. Let's make the timeline. Yeah. <laughs> like, hit this one. I like it. I like it. And I'm so like, oh my gosh. People are probably like, oh my gosh, who is this woman? What is she doing? I'm, I'm holding down the shift button and I'm clicking on multiple of these. I'm right clicking, paste. I'm going to paste the color on all of those. And now all of a sudden, all of these colors match, right? So we got a little sequence and color. Oh, nice. So this was just a super short one, but the next one is going to be more intense. I want to see this last clip. Oh, the, this... catching the bear? Yeah. And catching the fish? Was fish. that fish really even trying? Like, <laughs> it kind of like jumped in its mouth, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's interesting because this sort of clip would be great for a website without a fade at the end because I can get it to loop and it'll just oh, go straight yeah. back to the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like boom, 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 straight back to the beginning and it'll just now keep that, looping. that goal, I believe it was a goal flying mm-hmm. in, in front. Oh, that's like catching that. That's I was pretty happy with that. I was pretty yeah. happy with that for sure. So it could be a lot, you know, a lot simpler. And if I did want to like take this middle clip, and if I go, um, if I take this middle clip and uh, let's see, I'm going to go to workspaces. I'm going to go to my editing workspace. All right. So my editing workspace, I've got all these effects controls that came up over here. Um, so say this one, I wanted to zoom in. Now zooming in, you do lose quality if you haven't like, unless you're doing things like shooting at 4K and mm-hmm. things like that. But you can do all sorts of things where you adjust your scale so that you can go from a you know, different clips or whatever. So you can adjust that scale and then you actually, I made a keyframe there. So, and we'll talk about keyframing, but I think keyframing might be kept for to, until tomorrow. Um, yeah. Okay. So now it's 120. Um, I just blew it up. So yeah, there we go. And I can take this and change it's where it's sitting. If it's higher, if it's lower, all that good stuff. And you know, yeah, I don't want to talk about keyframing just yet. I can keep it simple keep it super simple um so there's my little bear right so now i'm going to close this project and um save changes now i don't save changes we're going to do a new project um and we're going to make a sword build hummingbird video for instagram and tiktok and we're going to add music this time so each of these adds a step if that's all right (laughs) am i being too slow wade am i being too simple this is good good. okay uh yeah we're getting all of the uh, different medias and formats we can output this for. I think it's awesome. Okay, cool. So I can select them here in this panel instead of dragging, like I've instead of doing it. So I did that at the beginning. I'm going to do my project name as Sword. Sure. Sword Adobe. For the Sword uh, for Those there. of you just tuning in, welcome. How's it going? <laughs> uh, we are with Christy Odom, and she is uh, walking us through her processes for creating uh, slow motion. Uh, video for <laughs> social media and various <laughs> other platforms. Oh my goodness. I'm happy you guys are all here. And this is getting recorded so people can play it back and watch it later if they're Absolutely. right. Absolutely. That's right. Can... You can watch a replay at any time on Behance or YouTube. <laughs> so that'll be really cool. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to new sequence. And I am going to. You know, I'm going to go ahead and just, this was actually all shot at 4K, okay? So I am going to make a 4K sequence here, and then I'm going to make additional sequences for when I cut it down so that I've got, like, one master 4K sequence, and then I can, like, make TikTok and Instagram sequences after that, and then I can cut and paste what I've done. And I'll show you about how I, gotcha. how I do all this. All right, so the frame size for 4K is 3840 by and everything has to match what it's it does it has it has to be smaller or equal to what it was shot at you can't just make it 4k 
you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't make up the numbers at that point. <laughs> Except for some TV salesman thinks you can, but that's okay. <laughs> and here's like, if I was doing a bigger project and I wanted a little bit more depth to my color, I might go here, but for the sake of this, I'm going to keep it at 709. Um, and you know, if I was doing something a little bit more, you know, for the sake of a bigger project, I might click on, on, on maximizing down here, but, um, just because it probably won't play back nice and pretty for you guys. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, yeah, no, it's so funny. It's like when I, I got all excited, I'm like, oh my God, look at what all the cameras are doing. Look at these file sizes. And then I'm like, look at my computer <laughs> I <have to> upgrade <laughs> like everything yes, at home too. Uh, Cause it's like, oh my God. Absolutely. <laughs> I had to like, yeah, so there is that. Um, so now I've got my new sequence. This was all shot at 120, so I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to speed duration, bring that down to the correct frame rate here. And now we've got all these 4K videos that um, you can see. I don't, how is this good? How is this looking on your end, Wade? Is it just a little jittery or? Um, it looks fine to me. Okay. I'm not seeing any real jittering or anything, so. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to go through. And one thing about birds, I will tell you, a lot of times they do something right after they poop. <laughs> so it pooped, and then all of a sudden it's going to do the stretch, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. So don't ever take your camera off an animal right after they, they poop, because this is like some of my favorite shots are like, that's, is that okay to say on Adobe no, Live? Am I getting in trouble is, for this? No, that is a that is a very <laughs> precise pro tip. Like that is honing into the core of shooting, uh, you know, photography for animals and wildlife. All Ooh. right. So now we're going to do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna use a razor, and I'm going to use the selection tool, and I'm going to pull the good bits out, and I'm just going to chop this like crazy. Um, this hummingbird has the largest, I think, bill to body ratio out of like, out of the, I'm going to turn my music off. We don't need that. I was going to ask, is that normal? <laughs> no, no, super unusual. And like, it's, oh my gosh, look at this. You got to watch this when the tongue comes out. It's like, <laughs> So I think, oh, that's where it really goes out. That's the one I want right there. Yes, that is the the it, tongue shot. Does it completely go out of frame? Um, that's no, amazing. I think it's so cool, right? Such a beauty. We have so many cool. I think it goes further the next time. This is the one I want right here. There it is. Yep. Oh wow. Yep. <laughs> and you can always like make these if you've cut too much. You can just drag the end of your clip. I might have to pull the dots together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told myself I wanted a class that everybody could use. If they've never used Premiere before, they can start shooting these slow motion. So I hope no, that this is great. I'm not, I know I'm not using the videography terminology and all my good stuff. All right, this one I remember the bird flies off. So I want to get that flight. Okay. And this might be a good ending for my sword bill clip, right? Oh, yeah. And so I'm doing my cutting. All right, so this was one of my favorites. There was a hummingbird feeder that I found out that they cleaned every day and everything was ethical because I went through all my bases, but it combines water, which is one of the elements, with a hummingbird. All right. So were you, were you pulling focus on this? Because it looked like you kind of racked back. No, this was the camera. The camera, okay, the camera caught right. it pretty quickly, though. Okay. This is slow motion, oh, no, remember? I thought it was, like, artistically mm -hmm. done. I was like, oh, look nope. at this. No, that was... Um... Just take the credit. Just take the credit. Yes, that was me. Yeah, I did all that. I did all that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I love this bird. I love this bird. Okay, so watch this. When the bird goes down in the theater, this is so cool, and comes up, so right here, splashes. Yeah. That's what I want, but I want when I, I'm using a um, tripod here. You can kind of tell like by the movement being a little cleaner. See that tongue going in and out? Yeah. Kind of cool. So right. Make, uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. I'm just talking about, well, I'm just rambling. Just filling space. Well, I, so was I. <laughs> I was just going to say, do you make sound effects? Because I, I caught myself just making sound effects. As... Did you? What sound yes. effect would you put on this? Oh, it was like sploosh or skadoosh or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't don't get me doing sound effects man. oh no i think it's uh, great it's we should be recording that i think it was oh it's recorded was, it oh yeah that's right okay so i want to go to the first one that splashed because i where does the focus catch the focus was right there so and you can click the left and right arrow so you can see the exact moment like that's where i want it to start right there okay oh yeah so you can hone in on the frame yeah where the the focus caught the exact frame mm -hmm. god bird is so pretty isn't it pretty i love that i use that in my campaign that one left to right that was it just that that's all i want i don't even want this one anymore because that next one is better <laughs> um so we'll use and was there a good side tongue face oh we got the tongue from the first one but this was cool too because like i just liked watching i just i liked watching this beak it was like it's just so cool right i'm really entranced <laughs> on the color by the color scheme like the subtlety but i don't know the purples to greens it's uh the metallics are so pretty i'm obsessed with hummingbirds like it's my newfound oh that was it that little left to right just that clip there i am slightly obsessed with hummingbirds um yeah so now we've got all these little clips now we got to think of an order i think the flying off at the end is going to be the best ending um, for an intro, I like the splash of the water. What do you guys think? Splash of the water for the beginning? Oh, yeah. So maybe we'll move let this to the front. Let us know, chat. I think yes. I think that's yes. <laughs> so splash of the water to the, we'll do the stretch right before the fly off. How about that? So we'll do, yeah. So we'll do splash of water to the moving of the head. Um, you don't want light clips next to each other. So. I can't do this one next to this one unless I flip it. Remember how I was flipping it yeah. before? I could flip it. Um, or I could move the stretch to a different spot. Okay. What do you guys think? Delete it or move it or flip it? Well, let's let's see what it looks like. And then... Flipped. Oh, let's get my panel back. Where did my panel go? All right. Effects, video, transitions. Oh, not video effects transform horizontal flip so we'll flip that one all right so now it goes from that to the stretch over there yeah i like the i like the flip okay I, yeah i don't want to lose it okay so now i've got a, a fun little sequence um super short um but now you know we're going to play a little bit with adding audio um Oh, stretch. We're going to play with adding audio and then we're going to cut it down for Instagram and TikTok. How does that sound? Sounds, that sounds great. Um, do you already have, well, I'm going to let you talk about how you select your music. No uh, worries. But I do have a question. Uh, there's been a couple of questions about your computer hardware for being able to handle um, these, you know, higher resolution clips. Is that something you know right off or uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So I've got like a, a an Asus Studio Book right now that um, I'm actually able to do like 8K video editing oh, in the wow. field with it. Like that sucker's fast. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's kind of ridiculous. I'm like, what what what, what magic is in this machine? Um, and I actually did my last piece that had 4K and 8K footage while on the road, while on a laptop. So I'm I'm super impressed with where computer technology is going, um, and and yeah, really excited. So. That's, yeah, I, I, I've been a big fan of like the Asus laptops. I went from the, the ZenBook Pro Duo because of the extra 4K mm -hmm. monitor to now the Studio Book because I find the Studio Book is a little bit zippier, um, has a little better performance. So that's, that's, that's have been my laptops of choice. It's nice too because I can like edit on the couch while watching TV. I'm like, I never thought I would be at a period where I could like do video editing <laughs> on a laptop. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. So I'm going to go to, um, I'm just going to double click down in my media. No, wait, uh, I'll just go to, hang on. Let me just add my media. Oh, import. All right. And so I have a whole file called music. I will say I do license all my music from triple scoop music. Um, you, Adobe has an amazing library as well, but for these projects, I did use triple scoop. I'm going to pull these three songs in as well as my credit screen. Cause I give them credit whenever I put their music in. 
Um, what was that called again? Triple what? Triple scoop. But it's really important that you license music when you put things online, or if you're doing Instagram or TikTok, mm-hmm. you can use their music libraries, which is really quite convenient because you can use a lot more popular songs that way. But if you're doing something for your own website or anything like that, um, make sure your music is legal um, for sure. We are all artists here. Don't rip off artists, <laughs> you know. Um, so we've got these different songs, and and I'm gonna have you guys vote. So. Oh, well, let me know if the audio is coming through. Did I even click share audio? I might not have. Is the audio oh, coming Oh, yeah, we through? can hear it. We can hear it. So here's Wait. one song. It's a little low. I think we may be hearing it through your speed. No, I don't know. I'm, can I stop my share and reshare? Am I going to get in trouble for that? Uh, let's see. I don't think I clicked share uh, audio. Hold on, hold on one second, I believe. We're going <laughs> to figure this out. <laughs> We're going to take a standby real quick, and then we'll come back so that we can hear your audio. Okay, sounds good. Just hang tight, everybody. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Yay, <laughs> I think we have the, the audio working. fixed, so now we're ready to <laughs> hear these samples. So here we go. Let me know. And this is all licensed music from Triple Scoop. So we're going to go with song number one. We're going to call this number one. Kind of a fun song, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and play song number two. And let me know which ones you guys want to put in there. Oh, this one's got a little space. All right. Oh, yeah, we got very, very epic. Very different. And then this yeah. one, I think I had more horns or something on. Kind of felt hummingbirdish. Song number three. All right. So, what are we getting in votes for? One, two, or three? Uh, let's hear it, chat. What do you guys want? One, two, or three? Choose your own put adventure. A, put a put a one, two, or three in chat, and we'll <laughs> figure out which uh, which clip we want to use. Cody Bear says song one. Okay. Um, let's see if we get anybody else. Song one, it is. How about that? Sounds it's my good. favorite too. I think yeah, Cody Bear's completely I think so. right. It was very light. All right. So now I want to show you guys something that I do because I use these markers. Okay, so I play the music back and I literally just kind of close my eyes and every time I hear a beat, I hit a marker, okay? Oh, nice, yeah. So we're gonna talk about that because I think it adds a little bit more if the clips change on the beats, all right? So I'm gonna hit play and you can also short key for play is to just hit space bar. So I'm gonna hit space bar and then every time I hear a beat, I'm gonna click the, the marker tab, which is this tab here, okay? So did you see that? Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to change these clips a little bit so that, and it's nice because it'll snap them right to the markers for me. So I'll pull this one back to the marker. And you know, these are just such small changes that like, you know, um, and I can grab all three of these clips and extend them out and make this one go to the marker. Right click ripple delete. And then I can cut this one right at the marker there. Let's just do it this way because it'll snap it to there for me. Ripple delete. 
And then I have to make sure that I haven't cut any of the good stuff out. Because sometimes you accidentally cut some of the good stuff out doing this. And then I want to take this audio clip. This is all on my audio channel two, because audio channel one I have muted, which is the ambient sounds of the birds. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just cut this at the end here. And I cut that using that same razor tool. I use a selection tool. I am going to drag that there. And I'm also, just because I am such a big fan of, you know, giving credit where credit's due, I'm going to make a little title. I have a title scene for the music, just so that, yeah, respect back to Trump's suit. Okay. So now the transitions should work with the music. I'd have to fine tune it a little bit. Not as good out of this when it's streaming and all sorts of things, right? And yeah. I could pull, pull this off just a little bit. But now I'm going to take my audio. I'm going to extend it a little bit through that. And over here on the right side, there's something that says audio effects. I can click on the audio. No, I'm sorry. I want audio transitions. I can click on crossfade and I can um, fade that music out. I can pull the dots together and I can make that fade even longer. So it's not an abrupt stop. To the music. Yeah, the music fades down. Nice. And I can also go back and do my video transitions and do a dissolve at the end of the video here, right? So that's how I connect with my, yeah. And then if I had the bird making its call or something, and that, that's something that we'll you know, definitely hit on a bit tomorrow, I will um, put the audio in from the ambient making sounds and stuff like that. But I don't want to do too much at once. I think important for us now is to learn how to turn this into a TikTok. And um, if that's okay. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we have about uh, 26-ish minutes left. Perfect. Um, Perfect. If I'm, if I'm doing my math right, it's somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's, let's do it. Sounds good. All right, so I'm going to do this by a new sequence. So I'm going to go to File, New, Sequence, and it's going to add a whole other sequence. This one, I am going to go to Settings, and I'm going to reverse these. 1080 by 1920 because this is what I found to be a good ratio for TikTok. I want that same 29.9 frames per second. This all looks good. I can call this TikTok and I can also save this preset as my TikTok preset. I've already got a TikTok preset, so I'm just going to call it TT. Um, anyways, okay. So now I've got my TikTok preset. So here's the great thing about shooting in 4K. <laughs> when I take this whole sequence, and I can do that by creating this box and just dragging and selecting everything, and then I can control C, and then when I go to TikTok and I control V it. Oh my God, I'm so tight. I can zoom in so much, <laughs> right? So cool, look at this. Get so many more details. Kind of cool, but nothing lines up. So we're going to talk about lining this stuff up, right? Um, there's automatic ways to do it, um, which is really cool. Some of the automatic ways that you can just kind of like get the artificial intelligence to like line everything up for you. But I'm too much of a control freak for all of that. I'm going to go back to my editing workspace because my editing workspace, I love having all my effects control. When I click on an individual image, you can see over here that I have all these things under motion, position, I've got all sorts of things that I can change over here, which is nice. So I can zoom in, I can zoom out, but you gotta look for those bars up at the top and the bottom. I don't want those bars. Right. And I can move my image back and forth, right? So I can take this first hummingbird and like put it just a little bit more to the left. And I can do the same thing. I actually really love the position there. This one is where it really messes up though. And I can, um, yeah, just move these numbers, right? So this one is interesting because there's like the tongue coming out. So is this the one with the tongue or is this the stretch? This is the tongue. So what I may want during this clip is I may want movement that goes over to the right so the camera pans from left to right to show that tongue. Okay, so this is where we're gonna get into keyframing. Are we okay? Are we ready to do a little keyframing? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So over here, it's really nice because you've got a reflection of the timeline of this sequence here, right? So wherever I am 
here is where I am here. So you have the front of the sequence, the end of the, or not the front of the, the clip, the end of the clip, right? So if I go here and I put what is called um, a keyframe, it, it'll keep whatever settings I have static right there. So I can do the scale here and then I can like make another keyframe, say at the end and zoom in, right? And then you want to take this keyframe and move it to the very end. So now what that's going to do is it's going to zoom in as you're going through the clip, right? Pretty cool. You can do a lot of this because I shot this in 4K, so I've got all the resolution that I need to, to play around. But now say we want the position to go left and right. So I want to toggle that on. I want to start with its position that it's in right now. And then I want to take this and figure out where I want this to end. So I'm going to move this to the very end of the clip. And I am going to, yeah, I want this time. I want it to kind of end in that position, right? So now I'm going to take this to the end. All right. So now, you see, it zooms in. And you know what? I actually love this, but I don't love the scale. I want to keep the scale not zooming in. I just want it moving left to right. So I can toggle this animation off and delete all my keyframes for the zoom in. Now it should just go left to right. Kind of cool. So you can see the tongue. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Everyone Absolutely. good? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move the stretch there. Oh, I want the stretch to show a little bit more space there. Um, and this bird, you can't even see right now. So yeah. And when it flies off, there we go. All right. So let's check that out. piece with TikTok proportions. <laughs> Same thing. When you go, okay, so one thing that did trip me up at one point in time is before you export, you want this, this blue box lights up around whatever you're, whatever selected, okay? Mm -hmm. When you're exporting, you have to have your timeline exported. You have to tell from your probe, this is what I want to export. Because if I go here and then I try to go to file export, it's not going to let me export. Oh, it does, which is the one that doesn't let you export. If I'm in the wrong panel, sometimes it doesn't let me export. Yeah, see? It's not going to do anything. Okay, so I want to click here and then go File, Export, Export My Media, and then I, um, yeah, it's already set up for TikTok because I already made the sequence settings. If you um, if you go into the presets, you might be able to find a TikTok preset. Does that have a TikTok preset? Um, I can check. Not Good sure, night. yeah, just check. I'll check. More presets. Type TikTok. It does. It has a TikTok preset. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Um, so yeah, I can export it, and then I have to like get it on my phone. If um, you know, a lot of times I'll just throw it up on my um, my cloud or my Google Drive or whatever, mm -hmm. and then I'll download it on my phone, and then I'll upload it to TikTok, and then I'm done. So that's a little bit about how I add the audio, real quick on keyframes and on TikTok. And then I have something else I want to share with you guys and show you guys since we have a little bit of time, right? Well, yeah. okay. Um, if it's all right, I, I'm going to, um, no, I don't want to stop the share. I just want to close this window. Um, save changes. No, I don't, actually, maybe I should have. That one was kind of cool. <laughs> um, it was really cool too, because this journey into video has just been like such an amazing opportunity and like getting these commercial jobs. I do want to share with you guys, since we just did the birds, I'm going to share with you guys a project I just finished for Nikon um, on the hummingbirds of, well, it's on the birds of Ecuador. Uh, it was all with the Z9, 400 2.8 lens, the new mirrorless lens with the built-in teleconverter. Um, but you guys will see a little bit about like kind of a whole piece that I've put together. Wonder if I should try the 4K version or if I should do the small version. You can see which one plays, uh, see if the 4K plays. Oh, yeah. Have you played it fine before? How does that Sorry. look, just real quick? Oh, it's looking good to me, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna play good. the smaller one. Uh, I question, it to look good. Uh, do you have a favorite lens for shooting uh, birds specifically? Yes, oh, what have I done? Um, I do. I usually use my 500 5.6, but I'm now obsessed with this 400. <laughs> it was really cool. It was a really cool lens. So this whole piece was done with one lens. 
And it's got a built-in teleconverter, so the 400 um, with the 1.4, and you can stack it with other teleconverters. So you can use the internal 1.4, use a 2X, and for photos, you can put it in DX mode, which brings the 400 to 1680. If you're curious about all that, Nikon's last couple of videos on their um, Nikon USA website are um, the BTS and, and this campaign. So you can watch it in all its 4K glory on, on Nikon's YouTube channel right now. But here's the video. So that was just released on yeah. Thursday. I was pretty excited because I was pretty excited for this shoot. And um, so yeah. good, it's so good. Uh, yeah. Watching the hummingbirds, uh, you know, nature, uh, a natural nature's gimbal is just wild. Like the head's completely static and everything else is moving. It was really, it was such a fun campaign. And that's why I'm really excited about tomorrow because tomorrow I'm going to go into um, the Z9 campaign and actually putting together like a full campaign piece. So today was more on the short clips and then tomorrow is on like how to put together a, a finished piece. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about tomorrow. 
I did have another thing I wanted to teach today, though, if we have time. Absolutely. We have time. Yeah, we yes. have about um, 20 minutes. It's uh, closer to 15. OK, perfect. That's all I need because this is 17 ish. So... Yeah, there we go. Somewhere and I know we, we were talking about this a little bit before, but it's so funny because like making the transition from photo to video, <laughs> like I am also in love with time lapses and, and me mm -hmm. and Paco did a um, did a live recently on time lapses of mushrooms and fungi and florals and we had a lot of fun with that. But I will say that every time I do a slow motion video piece, I know it's not slow motion, but I always end up putting a time lapse in it, like always. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. I, yeah. I think it's like the the scene setter, the establishing shot. There's something about, and I think it's really beautiful because it's a different way of manipulating time. But it's also, and as, as you saw with that, like at the very beginning, there's the clouds, which that was really hard to kind of do a um, um, do a time lapse with a 400 millimeter lens. But it was like everything had to be 400 millimeters, so I was really excited about that. But um, I ended up getting that real tight of the the clouds moving through the forest, but. Um, I'm working on a slow motion video piece right now of prairie lands and wildlife that lives on the prairies. And when I went out to the prairies, <laughs> I was, yeah, there were, there were way, there were a lot of experts on this trip. It was like all <laughs> conservationist experts teaching me nice. about like prairie wildlife. It was one of the most beautiful experiences. Um, but the drive down, while it was beautiful, I got caught in a prairie storm. <laughs> Can which you explain what a prairie storm it was is? like we were really close to the border of canvas we were in southeastern colorado and i was like scared at this gas station just looking out my window going oh my gosh and then when i made it to to my destination it was like this lightning storm that i had to drive through um i had to drive through it not once but twice because i'm not the i wasn't being the the smartest person on my trip down. i i was driving down and i see this crazy storm that scared me so much that i pulled over and i hung out at a gas station mm -hmm. and what i didn't realize safety, is i'd actually i pulled all the way through the storm and then when i stayed at the gas station the storm went back Auto overhead <laughs> and it went back on the path and i was like oh, that man. was um that was not i'm not used to big storms but well, you, you didn't have a storm expert with you so <laughs> no. that's not on you no. yeah. oh my gosh i was so scared and it was so funny though because when i made it i've learned from my good friend that um that storms are actually really beautiful on the back end of storms so there's something about the clouds that come out and i ended up like and I think there's something about these prairie storms where my slow motion piece of this prairie area is gonna is gonna um start with this storm <laughs> because part of the scene setter and it was just unbelievably gorgeous. So I'm gonna do a quick time lapse um, and show you how to put that into you know a sequence and and premiere. And I think 10 minutes is all we need because gosh, it's so easy to do time lapses with the combination of Lightroom and Premiere. Like it's just simple. I mean, you know this, right, Wade? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, believe me, if we're keeping things simple, I, I'm a pro at keeping it simple. <laughs> I am pretty excited. So here's my Lightroom catalog. This is the storm. Um, and you can't see it quite yet, but yeah, when I scroll down, you can see all of the lightning bolts that are in all of these frames. I've just pulled everything into my library. See all these lightning bolts? Oh, yeah. All over the place, right? light goes down and you can see them oh my gosh it was like it was like look every like third shot seems every other every third has a lightning bolt in it it was crazy right so i immediately was like i want to are we looking at footage here in lightroom no this is photos okay They're so photos. i put my camera okay. yeah let me back up i put my camera on time lapse mode uh no, oh, no, no, no okay i put my camera on interval timer mode Okay. And I got the camera to take a photo every second, right? So as you can see, this is a shot and then like this one was taken and then one second later, this one was taken. And I had my camera set up on a tripod. I had all my gear with me and I was shooting at like 0.4 seconds. And um, yeah, uh, let's see if I have any other settings to share. No, oh, those are all my settings over here. Um, and then I pulled all of the photos into Lightroom. So I pulled the whole sequence in. There's 375. I actually think it was fully 422 shots, but this is what I cut some shots off the beginning and the end. <laughs> so we're now going to look at this first image and I'm going to go into my develop mode and I'm going to go ahead and just 
edit this image how I would edit a photograph. So I'm gonna add some contrast. You guys know I like to take things dark and then add highlights. I really like that contrast look. And I also like a bit of a vignette, same sort of edit that I did for my videos, right? Yeah. Um, now this is actually gonna get darker and darker because it gets later. So I'm gonna make it go a little brighter than I normally would realizing that it's going to go into darkness. So I've done this edit on the first image and I'm going to go all the way to the image at the very end. I'm going to hit my shift button, hold it down and then click on the last image. And I've selected all of the images and I click sync. And this is really cool too, because if you have a dust spot or anything, you can fix it in the first image and sync it all throughout. You can even crop down if you want that lightning, lightning tighter. And now it's going to go through and it's going to edit like, it's going to put that same edit on every single 375 of these images. I'm going to check to see what that looks like at the end. You know what? That's actually pretty cool. It's a little on the dark side, but you know, I might take this last image and I might edit it just a little bit more, add some more whites, make it just a touch brighter. Yeah. I want this to be just a touch brighter. Okay. So now that I've done that on that last image, cause you kind of have to go back and forth, I'll go all the way back to my first image. I'll uh, I hit the space bar instead of shift. I'm sorry, I'm going to oh, have no. to do that again. You hold down shift and then you click on that first image. It's going to highlight everything. And then I hit sync. It's going to synchronize everything with that last edit I did. So now all the images are edited the exact same way. So now that everything's selected, I, and you know, I go through and I can do my export and I'm going to do my export. I did this in a folder called, um, four because this was the fourth of the sequence of things we were doing today <laughs> which is storm <laughs> adobe slow motion and i put it in a subfolder called s edit now here's the great thing about this is you can have whatever size you want here but you can also go ahead and match your 4k or 8k footage um, for resolution for something that really holds up good in video i would suggest 72 or if you really want to get fancy 96 is actually better so 96 pixels per inch is a really good pixels per inch for stills and video um, you can do the long edge i did the long edge here because i'm doing like say i'm doing a, uh, a video that's just 1080 by 1920 so on a high def video 1920 being the long side I wanted something just a little bit bigger than that so I can do a little bit of zooming in, in, in post. Um, so a lot of times you want just a few more pixels so you can zoom in or out because I took these all as high resolution raw files. Like these are all like 45.7 megapixel files. They're huge. Um, so I've got enough data to be able to like zoom into that storm and I could even make that bigger. I could do this at 4K settings or whatever I want. So I hit export and all 375 of those images are now going to end up in um, in this folder that I've put called for storm subfolder s edit and it's that's the path to where to get to. I'm not going to do that now. I did that before. It's like one of those cooking shows when I like right. pull the food out, yep. like it's already been done. <laughs> what we have in the oven. <laughs> so yeah, and now we're going to go into Premiere. Um, so I do tend to not have multiple programs open at once. Um, especially since I'm zooming with you guys. So whenever I finish with Lightroom, I close it. And whenever I'm doing anything with video editing, I also close everything that I'm not using. I, I'm very clean with my computer. My active files that I'm working on are on my computer. Anything that's not active is off my computer so that I've got a lot of hard drive space. I don't try to do any of this video editing from external drives. I clear an internal space for, for all my video editing. And I, I do things to optimize my workflow in that way. So yeah. So I'm gonna now do new project. I'm gonna call this um, Adobe Storm. Okay. We have okay. about four minutes. Before That's all we you need. Recap. That's all we nice. need. Nice. Super cool. So I'm back in here. I'm gonna go to importing my media. Um, so under this, under four Storm S Edit, I have all my files, right? I click on the very first file, right? And then I um, click this button here that says image sequence. Now this is really important. Like you can't break the sequence of the numbers here, okay? So if you delete a file in camera or something like that, you have to rename your files because it's only gonna, it's gonna count and it's gonna pull everything in 
that has the next number. So if you've deleted a file because a car drove through, it's gonna not pull in anything after that file. So in Lightroom, you can rename everything. You have to rename it so everything is sequential. All right, that's important and that's gotten me messed up a few times. So you click on that first image, you click on this image sequence, and it is gonna pull everything in as a time lapse at 29.97 frames per second, which is its default. So it's gonna take all of those pictures, put it together as a movie for you. So easy, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna to go to um, file new sequence. And where's my sequence? It's like, I've got all these lights behind me so that you can see my face and then I can't see my computer. I'm going to go ahead and just use this KO1080 because I've made it. It's easy, right? I don't have to build my own sequence. And now I can pull this storm in, which is here. That's fine. All right, watch this. It made a time lapse for me. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. That looks amazing. So I can mix that in with my other footage. And that's all I do. And you can take this and you can do the same thing that we were doing before where you can, you know how I was right clicking over here? You can right click on it on the timeline and you can change your speed duration here. And so I can now go and make this a little faster. Say it was a little slow for me. And time lapse, I find that I'm constantly changing the speed a little bit at the end um, just to kind of make it nice and pretty and clean. So there's my storm. Very cool. This is a big nice. file. It's kind of glitching my picture a bit, but yeah. So I wanted to show you guys that before tomorrow because tomorrow there is a time lapse that I put in. But today was more about video. Um, but yeah, it's really easy to combine the two. And from motion to stills to motion, I feel like time lapse is a is a great thing to play with as well. And if you're interested in time lapse, definitely check out the recording that that we did for that me and Paco did for Adobe Live. Like, um, I guess it was about a year ago. But we, we go into a lot of details about time lapse. Maybe Cody Bear can find that for us and put it in the <laughs> chat. Uh, uh, Christy, um, if you want to give a recap for what we did, but I think you just kind of did. Uh, but maybe we can talk about what we're going to do tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, so what we did today, we first started with a very simple, like, thinking about using moving stills and using little bits of video to enhance websites, to put on your Instagram and your social media. We started with a very simple black and white. We moved to a very simple color. And then we moved to a um, video that incorporated music and did TikTok and all sorts of things and a little bit of keyframing. And then we showed really quickly how to do a time lapse. And, and that's something you can incorporate in. So today was all about short form and um, producing stuff and great visuals for, for either your website or your social media. And tomorrow is going to be I was really excited because I did end up with a Nikon campaign that was on their new flagship mirrorless camera, the Z9, that was all on slow motion video. I was like so nervous. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was awesome. And um, so I'm going to break down and show you guys the raw footage there and show you how I clipped together an actual campaign that celebrated high altitude um, mountain wilderness. So that's, oh, that sounds amazing. That's, yeah. If we have, how much time do we have? We're like, uh, really. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're wrapping up right now. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't, can't wait for tomorrow. I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, um, this is, I think, the last uh, live today, but stick around for other streamers that may be streaming on Behance. Uh, Adobe Live will be back tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time for a special photography stream with uh, Adobe evangelist Terry White. Uh, thank you, Christy Odom, for hanging out with us and showing us all your tips and tricks. Um, and uh, yeah, we look forward to tomorrow. Thank you all. And if you guys um, have a chance, I'd love to see some of your work. Follow me on Instagram. It's at Christy Odom. Follow me at Behance and and, and reach out. I, I You guys have spent a lot of time looking at my work. I'd love to see yours. I love collaborating with artists. So thank you so much for your time today. It was such a gift. Yeah, this has been great. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you guys soon. All right. Have a good one. Bye.